today is day 136 of the year of streaming and learning to code. We are continuing on here at Code Academy. Uh, well, today we are diving into JavaScript. We finished Ruby on Rails authentication 100% of the way through. Ah, not JavaScript, Java, this subliminal messaging. Remember, this is the uh, new course they added at do 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 at what mm, at the top so we'll be getting to those after we complete the rest of the stuff after the watson api you know maybe we'll squeeze it in after php and then just end entirely on the watson api who knows i've got uh I bought that Udemy JavaScript course that I've yet to do. So maybe maybe I'll we'll finish the Watson API and then tackle the JavaScript one because that'll flow in nicely to the Udemy course. Anyways, we'll figure that out. That's another bridge to cross for a different day. Meantime, day 136, learning Java. Learn the basics of the popular Java language in this introductory course, estimated four hours. And basically all the rest of the courses here are pretty short as well. Way cool. Let's dive into that. What do they have? Course outcomes. In this course, you'll be exposed to fundamental programming concepts, including object-oriented programming, OOP using Java, You'll build seven projects, like Basic Calculator, to help you practice along the way. Why learn Java? Java is among the most popular programming languages out there, mainly because of how versatile and compatible it is. Java can be used for a large number of things, including software development, mobile applications, and large system development. Knowing Java opens up a great deal of doors for you as a developer. Syllabus, let's go ahead and check it out. So there are four sections to Java. There is section one with one lesson, uh, at least one free lesson. Two, conditionals and control flow. Also one free lesson for that. Object-oriented Java, one yet again, and data structures. So a fairly, fairly short, short course for the free version. Still four more hours of free stuff than if we weren't doing this at all. So let's let's be grateful for that. Um let's let's just dive right into it. I don't think there's a whole lot more to to go over. So introduction to Java. Let's do this. Go time. <laughs> All right. And you know what? Before we fully embark on that journey, let's do a quick rundown. Mike, checkity check, webcam, golden, Code Academy, good. Little Kitty is already in our nap, lap, uh, in our lap, napping. There we go. Yes, one of those situations is, is right. Uh, here we go, and section 1 of 12. We have seen worse. We have definitely seen worse. All right. From the top, Java is a programming language designed to build secure, powerful applications that run across multiple operating systems, including Linux, Mac OS X, and Windows. The Java language is known to be flexible, scalable, and maintainable. I like all of these words so far. Java sounds great. We will begin with the fundamentals of Java programming, data types, arithmetic, and operators. We are, we are starting from scratch, again, uh, from scratch again, and that's okay. We'll learn a few concepts that you can apply to the programs you create. By the end of the course, you'll be familiar with the basic building blocks of a Java program. Instructions. Let's get started by knowing each other online for... Type your name with double quotes between the parentheses like this. System.out.println. No? 
print print line print ln shot in the dark no one knows um gilberto really that's what we're going with click click run run the code don't mind me do 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 do, do texty things Good, good, good. Yeah, okay, not not critical. Marching on. Uh section no, instruction one. So line four. First we have public class your name. Public stat void main string empty brackets arguments, we can only assume. Line four system out print ln. It's gotta be print line. Gotta be print line. Gilberto. That is... That is a lot of fun. Do 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 do. Meh. And run. Did we blow up the internet? Look at that. Gilberto has joined the club. Welcome. Onwards to second two. First step of Java underway. Great job. Damn straight great job. You've already learned how to print to text. Creating more useful Java programs will likely require you to work with several additional types of data. Let's explore a few of them. The first data type we will use is int. Int is short for integer, which are all positive and negative numbers, including zero. This number can represent a number of visits a website has received or the number of programming languages you know, the int data type only allows values between negative 2 billion, 1 million, 47, 483,648, and 2 billion, 147 million, 483,000. 647. I can't actually tell if they're being serious or not. I find that very odd. Did the computer just get tired of thinking or counting or... I mean, I don't think I've actually ever had to reference any billion number integer ever outside of schooling for like a math problem being tested on just for fun. But, uh... Well, I'm sure there's probably not a whole lot of reason for the computer to surpass that either, but still, I just, I wonder why it does that. Hey, be Dempsey. Or no, no. Yeah, be Dempsey. Good, good, good. How are you doing? Hopefully you're doing well. On this, uh, Jesus, what day is it? Little kitty. What day? Nope, she's passed out. It's a Tuesday. All I know is today is day 136, and the last 135 days I've only known them as the numeric value. No idea what day of the week it is. Um, good. What are we doing? Ah, we were pondering why the hell it stops at the 2 billion mark. I find that so odd. I wonder if they'll give us a reason why. Let's keep reading on. Instructions. 1. Type any whole number in between the parentheses. System print out line and they they told us what integer stands for we're never going to find out what print ln is gotta be line gotta be line type any whole number between the parentheses int data does not need to be between quotes so you can avoid using quotes this time i seriously i'm gonna i'm gonna test them on what they said we're gonna take this copy this will run this will run Watch that. Oh, no, it didn't run. Why didn't it run? Actual model number error. It, oh, it's the quotes. It's the quotes. It didn't know what to do with itself. It got pissed looking at the, or the, the commas. Not the quotes, but the commas. Let's, let's close that. Don't mind the angry error. That was a trick. We're running. Ta-da, and it spit that, that hideous number out. But it says that's its limit. Let's try putting 8 in. Uh, that's correct. I'm good, just learning some more JavaScript yourself. I'm doing good. We have, we've just embarked on our Java journey. Not JavaScript, but Java. Uh, yeah, so only, only 12 sections for today. We're 
right at the beginning with two. And uh, yeah, but aside from that, day's going well. Life is good. Learning, learning programming. It's always a good day when we're learning stuff. So we're going to do an eight and see if the world falls apart. Run. That is shocking. It literally stops right there. What the hell? That's so odd. You know what? Look at this. I don't know why I care so much about this, but it goes to 648 on the negative side, but it only goes to 647 on the positive side. I would be more okay with it if it was both 7s and both 8s, but that pisses me off even more. That's wrong. It shouldn't be doing that. Whatever. We'll play by their rules. Confined in their 2 billion whatever all the way down to 7. It is a large playground they've given us, but we are still confined, and we can feel it on our souls. Damn it. Fantastic. You just printed out an integer data type. The next data type we'll use is the boolean. A boolean is a data type that can be only either true or false. Type either true or false between the parentheses of system out dot print ln to print a boolean. Let's do true because we're feeling that. We're feeling true today. Run. Beautiful. Green check mark for everybody. Everyone's thrilled. The city is not on fire at the moment. Perfect. Let's look at one more Java data type. Char. Share. Care. We know it's for character, but I'm, we haven't had to reference this in a while. We're going to call it care. The care data type is you because it's character. Maybe it's char. I don't know how it's referenced when it's just a little portion like that. Moving on. The data type is used to represent single characters. That includes the key on a keyboard that are used to produce text. Yeah, it's definitely care. Care is short for character and can represent a single character. All character values must be enclosed in single quotes like this. Single quote, G, single quote. Instructions in between the parentheses of system out dot print type any single character of your choice. Make sure it's enclosed in single quotes. Hashtag single life. All right. Uh, what is a good letter to choose? You know what? We don't, we don't use the letter Z enough in our life, so we're going to use the letter Z. There we go. And we're running, and we're running. <laughs> Spectacular. Next, section five. The int boolean and char care. I don't like saying care when there's an H, because I just see char. Our fundamental data types of Java that we will see again later in the course. Another important feature of Java in many programming languages is the ability to store values using variables. Variable stores a value. In JavaScript, all variables must have a specified data type. We can assign a variable to a specific data type like this. Int my lucky number equals 7. The variable my lucky number now stores the value 7 as an integer type. A semicolon is also used to end all Java single code statements. We will cover statements that should not end in semicolons later in this course. Instruction set the int variable number equal to the value 42. That's a damn good number. That is a good number. So. Public class variables, public static, void main, string, blankety blank, arguments, int my number, boolean is fun, are, oh, we're going to be going through all three of those guys. Good, good, good. Okay, so int my number equals <laughs> 40 do. Uh, I guess we should run that before we change anything. Cool, one down. Set so the boolean variable is fun to true equals true. Look at that. Running, running, and three. Set the care variable. I still want to say char. We're going to stick with char. 
set the char variable movie rating equal to a single quote. Single quote. A running. Good times, good times. Section six. Loading white space, right? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Before we explore what we can do with variables, let's learn how to keep code organized in Java. White space is one or more characters, such as a space, tab, enter, or return, that does not produce a visual mark of text. White space is often used to make code visually presentable. Java will ignore white space in code, but it is important to know how to use white space to, uh, to structure code well. If you use white space correctly, code will be easier for you and other programmers to read and understand. Instructions, the given code is poorly formatted. Place is formatted on line five, so it's easier to read. Ah, uh, after the semicolon, right, 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 on line five. There we go. Look at that. Look at that little cat. Where are you going? No, you're just re repositioning yourself. Okay. Good, good. We're, we're running and we're nesting. Section 7, comments. A comment is text you want Java to ignore. Comments allow you to describe code, keep notes by using comments in Java code. You may help yourself and even other programmers understand the purpose of your code. That comment refers to, in Java, there are two styles of comments, single-line comments and multi-line comments. Single-line comments are one-line comments that begin with two forward slashes, Slashy slash, I'm a single line comment. Multi line comments are generally longer comments that span multiple lines. They begin with slash asterisks and end with asterisks slash. Here's an example slashity asterisks, hello Java, asterisks slashity. Cool, cool instructions. The statement on line four prints out noise. Ask Java to ignore it by commenting it out. Place two forward slashes at the beginning of line four. Now it's indented. Did they do it? So they don't have it next to it. That is a single space and it probably doesn't matter, but I'm wondering if it should be there next to it or if it's better to have that it's probably better to have it next to the comment, to the text of the comment, right? I think so. We'll do that. That feels relatively okay, all things considered. Uh, run that guy, and then now section two, or instruction two, write a multi-line comment that begins anywhere after the single line comment you just wrote, again, the comment can say anything you like. Oh, I'm writing the multi-line comment. Cool. Um, well, here we'll just leave it here because we get to do it ourselves. Slash. Meh. I guess we should make it multi-lined. Meh. More mehs? There we go. That's concerning. All right. Let's back up some of the nonsense. Are we good? We're set. We're running. We've commented. We did our single line comment. We did our multi line comment. And we're nexting. Section eight. Math. Hot damn. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's try arithmetic in, uh, in Java. Right? Shit's about to get weird. Hey, man. Lol. Hey, Steven, or is it Steven? It is with a V. It is with a V. How, how, how about you, Dreadsteed? You, you rocking a V or a PH? What do we, what do we got going on? Uh, what are we doing? We are arithmeticking. You can add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers and store them in variables like this. Okay. Really? I'm just, so now I'm surprised, I'm looking as we're going through, I'm starting to see some of the, uh, we'll call it intricacies 
for lack of a better phrase, differences, the minor differences between Java and JavaScript. Like the fact that we don't have to identify that it's an integer or for the data type. I mean, it's got its... There's ways you can indicate that it's a certain data type, you know, like text is within quotes and stuff, but you don't have to specify everything. Everything's very spelt out, system, dot out, dot print, ln, versus it's just, you know, print, whatever. Uh, Dreadsteed, mine's a ph, gotcha, gotcha, good to know. Your... I think your name would earn more points in Scrabble, possibly. All right. Uh, true story. I've been tutoring Java and C Sharp, nothing advanced, just introductory classes. That's good. That's fun. I could, I could get into that. I could be that guy. I'm, we're approaching master level beginner. You know, here at Code Academy, after after crossing all these languages off our belt, definitely like stage one programming ideas or uh, concept ideas for all of the languages that that we've gone through. Though, what were we doing? We were doing something with numbers. You can add, subtract, multiply, divide numbers and store them in variables like this. It's pretty rewarding, actually, when they get it. Oh, I bet. Teaching people's awesome. I would do, uh, well, it was still kind of lesson-y, but in, in my previous, previous job, I was, um, a lot of customer support, kind of tech support, having to walk people through stuff, so it's always good when, when you can see the light bulb go off for someone. Do, 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 something regarding math. Right, right. We're reading instructions. You can add, subtract, multiply, divide, store them. Here's this. We're adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. Beautiful. It's all foreign and new to us. Everyone's excited. Set the int variable, my number, equal to the product of the two numbers. Okay. So, oh, we just, we just do, uh, good. Any, any two numbers? We will do, what are good ones? What are good ones? Do 42 plus 21. Oh, that's not plus at all. Plus 21. D D That's not a semicolon either. Running, and we're running. 63. Oh, we didn't multiply, that's why. Oh, good God, you just son of a... Un not even paying attention, Stephen. Ungrateful bastard. Uh, run, run. All right. Online tutoring. I'm currently learning JavaScript, but C Sharp is my next go. I'm hoping to tackle the C languages when I make it out of Code Academy. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Here at Code Academy, I was looking forward to Python and Ruby, both not ideal languages to learn here at Code Academy okay to get the fundamental concepts but not really something you can sink your teeth into um so yeah that's that but c languages we're looking we need to track those down <laughs> not online it was an introductory c sharp and java course also c sharp is closer to java cool so follow-up question I know JavaScript is slightly similar to Java. There's some commonalities. Is, I guess if we set up like a number line, is, C -sharp, is Java in between C Sharp and JavaScript? I'm assuming C Sharp is more different than Java than it is similar to JavaScript, if that makes sense. I'm just trying to gauge perspective-wise where all the, the languages fall into place. Kind of why I'm going through all of, all of Code Academy. Uh, B. Dempsey, I'm mainly learning JavaScript for HTML and CSS. 
then we'll be making a big jump. Yeah, that's that's good. That's smart. Plus, I think it's good to see those those three really do fit well together. That's what those are the three languages that Code Academy starts off with: HTML, CSS, and then JavaScript. Just so you can see in general how a lot of uh, you know sites work, apps work, things like that. All right, good work. Let's explore one more special math operator known as modulo. Modulo operator, represented in Java by the percent symbol, returns the remainder of dividing two numbers. For example, 15 modulo 6 will return the value of 3 because that is the remainder left over after dividing 15 by 6. Cool. Modulo operator is set the variable my reminder. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, use the modulo operator to set the variable my remainder equal to two. You can use any two numbers that return a remainder value of two. Cool. Uh, Red Steed, JavaScript is actually very different from Java. And C, for one thing, is thing. Its object system is prototypical, where you extend objects themselves versus classes. Oh, interesting. So JavaScript very different. Object system is prototypical. Extend objects, the last bit's helpful, where it where you extend objects themselves versus the class. So they're conceptually quite different. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, following up on that, we are doing... <laughs> What's going to leave us with, with two? We do something obscure, like 13 divided by 11. Yeah, yeah, get real weird on them. How's that? Ta-da, beautiful, beautiful. Next. All right, section 10 of 12. We are nearing the end. We can almost see it. It's also a weakly typed dynamic languages, whereas Java and C are strongly typed static languages. Maybe that's what I'm noticing, the minor differences. I mentioned uh, B. Dempsey earlier, I think. Just like every uh, how you had to, well, let's go back a page. You have to specify integer and then do stuff versus in javascript you just have your variable and then depending on how the like formatting of the value you put in if you have a number with no quotes it knows it's an integer right versus you if you do quotes then it knows it's text and blah 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 and here you've got system dot out dot print element like there's a lot i feel like there's a lot of specifying some nitty gritty stuff it's got a similar feel to JavaScript. It just feels like it's a lot more exact and precise to sort of the setup. Because in JavaScript, it'd just be, you know, console log or print or whatever. But yeah, good, good. Static is the whole variable declaration. And compiler checks if it's right strong. Typing means you have... You have to convert things explicitly. This is this is going to be. I can already sense the C languages are going to be questionable. I think unnerving is too strong, but I I can I can sense the direction that it's headed comparatively to to this in JavaScript. So, is the general consensus I've heard? is that the C languages are difficult. I think one is more difficult than the other. I don't know if it's C++ or C-sharp. That was the more infuriating of the, the Cs. 
but I know it's out there. My general... What is it? Hmm. There's a lack of... Lack of adjectives that I can think of to describe it well. The punchline is I'm concerned about learning any of the C languages. Hopefully it should go good, though. It looks like you're getting the hang of this. Let's explore another set of useful operators available in Java known as relational operators. Relational operators compare data types that have a, def, uh, that have a defined ordering, like numbers, since numbers are either smaller or larger than other numbers. Relational operators will always return a Boolean value of true or false. Here are a few relational operators less than, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. Relational operator is placed between the two operands. That term, uh, the terms that you want to compare using the relational operator, the result of a rel right? The result of a relational operator is printed out in the following statement: System dot print ln five is less than seven. That is true. The example above will print out true because the statement 5 is less than 7 is true. Good. One, use uh, one of the relational operators above to compare any two integers. Let's do, we'll do 42 and 21 again. Although we'll reverse it, 21 is less than or equal to, yeah, 42. And run that. D -d 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 -d. True. Next. <laughs> Struggling breathing. Good, good, good. All right, section 11. You may have noticed that the relational operators did not include an operator for testing equals to. In Java, equality operators are used to test equality. The equality operators are equals, two equal signs, equal to, and an exclamation, equal sign, not equal to. Equality operators do not require that operands share the same ordering. For example, you can test equality across Boolean, char, and integer data types in the example below, combines assigning variables and using an equality operator. Okay. Char or care my character a my integer is less than two system out print my character equals to my integer super false the example will print out false because the value of my chair a is not the same value shockingly as my integer number two uh negative two Use any equality operator to directly compare two Boolean values. Do not declare any variables. So, that last bit. Use any equality operator to directly compare two Boolean values. Do not declare any variables. So this is true to true. Is that what they want? Let's do true. Equals, you know what? we'll do true, not false. True, mm, false. And run that. Ta da! D -d 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 -d. Good times true does not equal false. That is section 11. Thank God. On to section 12. All right. Hey, Topher. How you doing? Here, here in the nick of the time, or here in the nick of time, yes, uh, to catch the end. Congratulations, you've learned some of the building blocks of Java programming. What can we generalize so far? Data types are in booleans. Characters, variables are used to store values. Whitespace helps to make code easy to read for you and others. Comments describe code and its purpose. Arithmetic operators include plus, minus, multiply, divide, and modulo. Relational operators include less than, less than, equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. Equality operators include equal to and not equal to. A full understanding of these concepts is key to understanding the remainder of the Java course. Let's keep going. Uh, Topher, oh, it's ending already. 
quite possibly we're gonna look at section two um yeah we're we're gonna look at section two just just because who knows we might it's a slippery slope looking at the next lesson there's been a, a smattering of times where we we glance at the next lesson and we just forge ahead so we'll see but at least We've met the minimum threshold for today, uh, knocking out the first 12 sections of the intro to Java course. Uh, still working on 12. So, instruction one, write a single line comment anywhere you want. It can be anything. Make sure it starts with the, well, I just want to comment out their stuff. Is that wrong to do? I feel like they're going to hate us if we do that. That's probably not what they wanted. They probably didn't want us commenting out their code, but they let it slide. Good on Code Academy for letting us get away with that. So we got rid of that. Set the Boolean variable is complete to true. Equals true. True. We'll run that guy. Okay. Uh, error, you know, it probably... It probably didn't like what we did. We'll we'll look at that shortly. Hey, you got your green screen today. Way cool. How big of a green screen did you get? Something monolithic or is it more like just a green bandana? I don't know how how small it is. I thought about just buying a green shirt <laughs> and just just do the the floating head thing. Yeah, not probably not advisable. Uh, do to do to do, do, do. So what? What generalizations? Java five error semicolon expected boolean is complete. Did I put the double equals or did they? Single equals. Oh, oh, okay. I must have done double equals then. My bad. There's that. Although they gave us the green check mark. I mean, I guess it is true, but probably not ideally for what they had in mind. Don't mind the angry red error at three. That was to correct step two. Uh, six by ten. Not, not bad. Fourteen bucks. That's pretty good. Way cool. Uh, set the integer variable awesome level equal to 121. Will do equals 121 run that sh beautiful green check mark for for instruction number three section four set the integer variable epic level equal to awesome level multiplied by two this all this math makes sense that's that's totally cool uh so that equals awesome level copy times do d d d d d can we just do that do we need to do anything else like parentheses or maybe we just run it i think we just run it that's it we just run it that works beautiful okay so uncommon the last line this guy so that the console prints out the value of epic level. Noted. We will most certainly do that. As requested. Fire away. Maybe. Yes, good, good. We got we got badge stuff things going on. That's hot. That's hot. Okay. Onwards. Up next. We'll, we'll take a gander at this next lesson. Up next, conditionals and control flow. Learn how to use control flow and conditional statements in JavaScript. A lot of repeats up. That's okay. This is, I'd like to note, do, 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 do. Their Java course following their nomenclature, if you will, would be, or terminology, whatever you prefer, the learn whatever language course is the intro course. So learn HTML, learn JavaScript. Well, that's not a good one. This guy over here, learn JavaScript. Those are the intro courses. They have their full courses, HTML, 
JavaScript, sans learn, if you will. And uh, so this guy, which we've just embarked on, is learn JavaScript. And they do mention it is their introductory course. Fingers crossed, not sure if it'll ever happen, might be part of their summer update, that they'll add a more in-depth Java course minus the learn. Hopefully, who knows, may not be that lucky. Um, but yes, good. So that's that. Again, that's why extremely, we won't call it, I'm going to say remedial, that's not correct, entry level, but it's supposed to be entry level. And so far, it's been awesome. It was, it was a uh, good, good intro to Java. So 11 seconds. Are we really psyched about Boolean operators and if-else statements? I'm not sure. Super basic. I think we're going to probably save that for tomorrow. Just because. Let's enter the course once more. So they've got introduction to Java. The single button. Conditionals and control flow. Single lesson in there. Object oriented. Single lesson and data structures. We're probably just going to leave it at, at that for today. I think intro is about as much entry-level fun as we can have for day 136. Uh, we will gander at tomorrow's lesson. Here's this. So far, we've explored the primitive data types in Java syntax. We've seen Java programs follow the instructions we provide them, such as printing, variable, uh, printing values to the console. We can also write Java programs that can follow different sets of instructions depending on the values that we provide them. This is called control flow. In this lesson, we'll learn how to use control flow in our programs. God, I want to read the instruction. Maybe we'll read the instruction. This is going to end up in me finishing all 11 sections, son of a bitch. Take a look at the code in the editor. I can feel it. If it looks confusing to you right now, don't worry. After this lesson, you'll be able to read and write Java programs that use control flow. Click run to run the code. We don't even have to type any on the first page. God damn it. Oh, fuckers. We're running it. We're doing it. Brace yourselves. Another 10, 10 sections. Son of a bitch. You know what? Let's at least look at the code. Let's at least look at the code. What happened here? We're going to do this. Let's do it right. Public class conditionals. Public static. Void main string. Empty. Arguments. If one is less than four and zero is greater than five. That doesn't feel right at all. No. What the hell would it be? No. That's no, no. Wrong. System dot print out. You're ordered in a cup of hot mint tea. Else if 21 is less than or equal to 19 or 17 is greater than or equal to 20. What is happening? This is all wrong, right? That doesn't make sense. System.print, you ordered freshly squeezed orange juice. Else if true is equal to true, make it not true. So that would be true, but it's not. So it's false. This was a bad day to continue. Damn. You ordered hot cocoa, else system printout. You ordered a cup of Java. Character choice, C. Switch answers. Wow, they're going through everything in this one. They're going to be covering switch cases and all that stuff. Good for them. Really? Are they going to be doing all that? Boolean operators and or not precedence. If statements, else, if, else, if, ternary, switch statements, and generalizations. Wow, this is like a shotgun round for them. One, one page for each, each thing. Good to know. Holy hell. All right, maybe, maybe this is for the best that we're doing this now. Case A, system.printout, you answer, answer choice, plus try again. Uh, you answered choice, please try again. Good and good. This is correct. Oh, it's meant to be false. I gotcha. It's full of lies, and this is the only correct option. You answered lies. Try again. Please select another valid choice. I was so confused. 
they made this confusing on purpose and in classes. Good, good, good. Okay, that's what's going down. I was like, what the f- <sighs> All right. The stress level, like, skyrocketed because it didn't make sense to me, but they were making- they made it- Reverse? False, if you will, on purpose. Okay, section two. Let's look at a set of operators that lets us control flow in our programs. These operators are called Boolean operators. There are three Boolean operators that we will explore. Let's start with the first one, AND. The AND operator is represented in Java by two ampersands. It returns a Boolean value of true only when the expressions on both sides of AND are true. For example, the code shows one outcome of the Boolean operator, AND. The following expressions use the AND Boolean operator, system.out, print true and true, prints true. The code below shows the rest of the possible outcomes, false and false, false, false and true, false, true and false, false. We can also use Boolean operator AND with Boolean expressions such as the following, 2, less than 3, AND, 4, less than 5, super true. Uh, yes, good times, beautiful. So, 1, use the AND operator in any two Boolean expressions of your choice between the parentheses in order to print out a value of true or false. They don't give a damn about anything. So we can just throw in whatever the hell we want. True and we're going to do false because we can. Nah, we'll do true because it's and and the goal is for true. They're fine with whatever, but we're going to do our best. So there's that. Running and they accept it. Good times. Next. All right. Good, good, good. Don't mind me texty things on my phone. Back to the Twitch chat. Okay. Great. The second Boolean operator we'll explore is called OR. The OR operator is represented in Java by the two vertical lines slash pipes, whatever you prefer to call them. Uh, in return... Ah, it returns a Boolean value of true and at least one expression on either side of the dual pipes slash vertical lines is true. The code below shows the outcomes or false and false, false, false and true, true, true and false, true, 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 all true, good times also works with this. Two is greater than one or three is greater than four. That'll still come out to true even though the second set is false. Beautiful. Use the OR operator in any two Boolean expressions of your choice between the parentheses. Are we supposed to be doing something like this? Maybe not just true and false? That's what I was doing before. We've done enough intro stuff out of 136 days. We can just drop in true and false and we'll live another day. True. Or false. We've earned it. We've earned it. We haven't earned our oxygen, apparently. Good God, struggling to breathe. That's okay. That is okay. Fantastic. The final Boolean operator we will explore is called NOT. The NOT operator represent, uh, represented in Java by exclamation. It will return the opposite of the expression immediately after it will return false if the expression is true and true if the expression is false. The code below shows the outcome of the Boolean operator NOT. NOT false is true and NOT true is false. We can use the Boolean operator exclamation with Boolean expressions such as the following. NOT 4 is less than equal to 10. That it would be true. But we've got the exclamation waiting outside, waiting to pounce, which makes it false. Tons of fun. All right. Uh, instructions. Use the exclamation operator to return a value of true on the code in line four. What do we, I would, what are we doing? Okay, so I can just cram it inside the parentheses. I was wondering if I needed to do an inner set of parentheses, like this guy, add them, but we can just shimmy it right on in there. It's cool they touch. And uh, lastly, well, they want us to do it one at a time. We're running and we're running. Use the 
not to return a value of false. There's that. And run again. Beautiful. Yeah, this is going fairly quick. So that's that's section 5 of 11. This was probably a good idea to continue on today. Although I may have spoken too soon. Who knows? There might be some monstrous section maybe hidden in section 7 or 9 that'll take 45 minutes for me to get through. Unlikely, but the options there. The three Boolean operators, AND, OR, and NOT, can also be used together and used multiple times to form larger Boolean expressions. However, just like numerical operators, Boolean operators follow rules that specify the order in which they are evaluated. This order is called Boolean operator precedence. The precedence of each Boolean operator is as follows. 1. NOT is evaluated first, AND is evaluated second, and OR is evaluated third. The numerical expression, every expression within parentheses is evaluated first. Expressions are also read from left to right. The following statement demonstrates how Boolean operator precedence works. System.out.println not false or true and false. So it's going to gauge, yeah, this is, all I know, the other thing here is that it's an or statement, even though there's the and there, with the and, since it's false in one of them, that whole side's false. And since it's an or here, that means it's all up to this side, and since that's false, and it's not, which means it's true, and if you have an or, then the whole thing, ah, ta-da, true. Look at that. So, the example above will point out true. In order, the expression is evaluated as follows. First, the not Boolean operator, not false, returns true. That alone solves the whole thing right there. Second, true and false evaluates to false. Finally. The remaining expression true and false evaluates to true, which really line three could be set on line two for the uh, reasons mentioned before. Instructions line four has a code statement that's incomplete. Use each Boolean operator no more than once to replace the empty comments within the slash asterisk asterisk slash. The code statement should print false. Uh, I kind of stopped listening around this section, so I'm not sure what the instructions said, even though I was the one who read them aloud. Let's look at this first, and then we'll revisit the instructions when I give a damn once more. Public class precedence, public static, void main, string, empty stuff, arguments, boolean riddle. Oh, we're removing things. Right, right, right. Okay, line four has a code statement that's incomplete. Meh. Use each Boolean operator no more than once, so all, all of the, uh, the stuff, not, and, and, or, and, uh, yeah, no more than once to replace the empty comments, those guys highlighted. The code statement should print out false, and we want it to be false. Okay, let's do this. We got three empty spaces, and we, we need a false to make it out alive. So, gut instinct. I'm just going to drop a, uh, an exclamation there. And let's see what else should we do. So, five is greater than two, and three is less than five. So, let's make this true. Maybe, and, and that would leave an or, uh, one is less than eight, so that's true, and that's true, but the whole thing is made false. I can live with that. I can live with that. So, run. 
Dee 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 dee. Beautiful. Good, good toss. Next onwards. Section six of eleven. Time to get iffy. All right. Let's get familiar with how relational equality and Boolean operators can be used to control the flow of our code. We'll start by exploring the if statement one in Java. The keyword if is the first part of the conditional expression. Two, it is followed by a Boolean expression and then a block of code. If the Boolean expression evaluates to true, the block of code that follows will be uh, run. Yes, right? I was going to say ruined. Watching too much Bob Ross lately, apparently. And, and Mr. Rogers. Um, good, good, good. So it's followed by a Boolean expression and then a block of code. If the Boolean expression evaluates to true, the block of code follow that follows will be run. I don't know why I'm re rereading this uh, like it's the first time I'm hearing it, considering how many intro courses we've gone through throughout the many different languages, but still. Here's an example of the if statement used with conditional expression. If 9 is greater than 2, system printout control flow rocks. True that. In the example above, 9 is greater than 2 is the Boolean expression that gets checked. Since the Boolean expression 9 is greater than 2 is true, control flow rocks will be printed to the console. The if statement is not followed by a semicolon. Instead, it uses curly braces to surround the code block that gets run with the Boolean expression is true. Uh, beautiful. Beautiful. One, the if statement in the code editor is missing its Boolean expression. The if bit? Yeah, yeah, right there. Right there. Good, good. Provide the if statement with a Boolean expression that evaluates to true. Is it wrong to just drop true in there? Probably is. Ah. Uh, We'll do something basic. One is less than two. Run it. Access granted. Tons of fun. Tons of fun. Seven of eleven. Sometimes we execute one block of code when the Boolean expression after the if keyword is true. Other times we may want to execute a different block of code when the Boolean expression is false. We could write a second if statement with a Boolean expression that is the opposite of the first, but Java provides a shortcut called the if else conditional. The if else conditional will run the block of code associated with the if statement if its Boolean expression evaluates to true. Two, otherwise the Boolean expression evaluates to false, it will run the block of code after the else keyword. Here is an example of if else syntax. If one is less than three and five is greater than four, super false, system printout, I defy the Boolean laws. Else, system printout, you can thank George Bool. Good. In the example above, the Boolean expression one is less than three and five is less than four evaluates to false. The code within the if block will be skipped and the code inside the else block will run instead. The text, you can thank George Bool, will be printed to the console one. The if else statement in the code editor currently prints out to the code in the if block. Modify the if statement's Boolean expression so that the code in the else block gets executed and printed to the console. So, public class, if else, public static, void main, string, arguments, if 7 is less than or equal to 7, try again, we don't want that guy, we want the other one, system, print out, success, so we want it to be false, right? So let's do... No, that, that's still, let's do that. 7 is, is greater than 7. Does that work? That works. Fire away. Success. Hot damn. Hot damn. Section 8 of 11. If, else, if, else. That's right. This is very inceptionally. Inceptiony? Or inceptionally. Either one. Both work. Good work. In some cases, we need to execute a separate block of code depending on different Boolean expressions. For that, we can use if, else if, else statements in Java. 
One, the Boolean expression after the if statement evaluates to true, it will run the block of code that directly follows. Two, otherwise the Boolean expression after the else if statement evaluates to true, the code block that directly follows will run. Finally, if all previous Boolean expressions evaluate to false, the code within the else block will run. Here's an example of control flow with the if else else statement. Int shoe size, integer shoe size is 10. If shoe size is greater than 12, sorry, your shoe size is currently not in stock, else if shoe size is greater than or equal to 6, your shoe size is in stock, else system.print, sorry, this store doesn't carry that shoe, uh, doesn't carry shoes smaller than a size 6. Okay. In the example above, the int variable shoe size is equal to 10, which is not greater than 12, but is greater than or equal to 6. Therefore, the code block after the else if statement will be run. We're, we're getting there slowly. The nose is getting more and more itchy, but I think we're going to survive. Set the value of the round uh, set the value of the round variable so that the code in the else if block runs. This guy, round is greater than zero, round is greater than 12, so less than 12, greater than zero, six, sure, that's halfway, so int round equals six, the match is over, the match is underway, the boxing match hasn't started yet. Good, good. The match is underway. Green check mark. Good times. If else statements can become lengthy even when you simply want to return a value depending on a Boolean expression. <laughs> Fortunately, Java provides a shortcut that allows you to write if else statements in a single line of code. It's called a ternary conditional statement. The term ternary comes from the Latin word that means compromise of three parts. These three parts, Boolean expression, single statement that gets uh, executed if the Boolean expression is true, and a single statement that gets executed if the Boolean expression is false. Here is an example of a ternary conditional statement. Integer, point scored, 21, character, game result, character, char, character, game result equals, point scored, greater than 20, W, L, System dot out print ln game results. Okay. Do 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 do. In the example above, the int variable called point scored is equal to 21. The Boolean expression is point scored greater than 20, which evaluates to true. This will return the value of W. Yes, because we got over 21. Ta da, it's comparing. Ergo, W, because that's on the left side of the colon right good which is assigned to the variable game results the value w is printed set the can drive public class ternary public static void main string int fuel level three character can drive equals something or other equal to the ternary expression fuel level is greater than zero, yes or no, equals, we get to type this one out, because we can, fuel level, that's not level, that's level, fuel level greater than zero, or Z for our, our UK friends, mm, question mark, Followed by single y colon n semicolon. Oh god, not inside. Bad, Stephen. Bad. There we go. All better. Let's run that. If it gets mad at us, which it didn't, no need to worry. You were just going to copy their statement. Next. 10 of 11, we are on the edge of success. We are so close. Okay. 
If I was section 10, what would I do? The conditional statements that we've covered so far require Boolean expressions to determine which code block to run. Java also provides a way to execute code blocks based on whether a block is equal to a specific value. For those specific cases, we can use the switch statement, which helps keep code organized and less wordy. A switch statement is used as follows. In restaurant rating equals three, switch restaurant rating case one system dot out dot print integer uh not integer print ln we're getting confused and winded due to the lack of oxygen don't mind me case one system print this restaurant is not my favorite case two system print the restaurant is good system uh, case three system print the restaurant is fantastic default I've never dined at this restaurant. Okay, so in the example above, we assign integer variable restaurant rating a value of three. The code will print a message to the console based on the value of restaurant rating. In this case, the restaurant is fantastic, is printed to the console. The break statement will exit the switch statement after a condition is met. Without the break statement, Java will continue to check whether the value of the restaurant rating matches any other cases, which means it would be three indefinitely, and it would just be the best restaurant until the earth crashes into the sun, basically, uh, and probably even past that. So the default case is printed only if restaurant rating is not equal to an integer with a value of one, two, or three. Instructions. Set the code block under the default uh, case. What, what, what? Set the code block under the default case to system.blah. So this guy is going in default. Oh, we didn't need to do any of that. We can just copy this guy. Here we go. Copy. Shove you right in there. Good times. Running and we're running. And now look at the code in the editor. Set the character variable penalty kick value to L, R, or C. L, Messi shoots the left and scores. Shoots to the left and scores. Messi shoots to the right and misses the goal. Bad Messi. C, Messi shoots down the center, but the keeper blocks it. Because that's what he's paid to do. Kind of want to go with C, you know? That's involving more people. Maybe we want him to score. He can score. He can score. We'll give him the L. He worked hard. Okay. Running. Boom. Messi shoots to left and scores. You know what we're also going to do? We're going to do it a second time because we can. And we're also going to do C. And run it. Ta-da. Messi shoots down the center for a second time, but the keeper blocks the second one. That's what the keeper does. Uh, hashtag keeper life. Kind of ridiculous. Let's kick it down a notch, Stephen, right? Uh, all right. Section 11. Generalizations. Our favorite thing to do. Great work. Control flow allows Java programs to execute block uh, code blocks depending on Boolean expressions. What did we learn about control flow so far? Boolean operators and or and not are used to build Boolean expressions and have defined order of operations and have a defined order of operations. Statements if, if, else, and if, else, if, else statements are used to conditionally execute blocks of code. Ternary conditional are shortened versions of an if-else statement that returns a value based on the value of a Boolean expression and switch allows us to check equality of a variable expression with a value that does not need to be a Boolean. Use the precedence rule to help you evaluate the Boolean expression in the single line comment above the tricky variable, then set the Boolean variable tricky equal to the result, either true or false. Wasn't really paying attention, so let's just read through this and then we'll look back at the instructions. Public class generalizations B. Look static void main strings. Okay, so this is commented out. 
3 is greater than or equal to 3 and true or true, so it would be true, but that's false because of the exclamation. So the whole thing would be false, boolean tricky, filled with lies. If 2015 is less than 2016, stuck in the past, else upgraded to the future. Integer, subway train 9, switch, subway train, case 1, this is a South Ferry bound train. Case 5, this is a Brooklyn bound train. Case 7, this is a Queens bound train. In default, I'm not sure where that train goes. So 9 is, uh, is lost, to be quite honest. So what do they want us to do? Use the precedence rules. Okay, so that's the order of operations, the, the order, which is not, and, and then or. Use the precedence rule to help you evaluate Boolean expressions in the single line comment above the tricky variable. Where the f tricky variable? Are they talking about this guy? This is the tricky variable, I guess. No one ever knows. Um, use the precedence rules to help you evaluate. Okay. Then set the Boolean variable tricky equal to the result, true or false. So nothing matters? What the, what the hell is happening right now? Am I doing something? Am I doing like Boolean tricky equals something with a semicolon? I don't think I am. I realize I'm probably getting rid of this. Do they want me to move this line? Equal tricky? Maybe that's what they want. And then a semicolon. None of this seems right. Maybe that's what they want. Boolean tricky. So it's... Well, we already talked through it. That's true or true. So inside here is true. But because of that, it means it's not. So that's false on this side of the and. And then here is 3 is greater than or equal to 3. So that is true. But that's true and false which means boolean tricky equals false but apparently they don't care so that's that's that try again the variable tricky should equal either true or false i think i'm lost i must be doing something horribly horribly wrong bad steven Bad Stephen. Hmm. So what's the next thing they want? Maybe it has to do with the other ones? Change Boolean expression in the if statement so that your program will print out the code in the else block instead. See, it's running this bit and it wants upgrade to the future. So, we'll just change it and run it once more. Yeah, the whole thing is awful. I'm, I'm not, I think there's an issue. My concern is that there's an issue with this. So we're going to copy it. Copy. And lastly, you know what, what was three? Set so the value of integer variable subway train equal to the case that will print. This is a Brooklyn bound train, which means this would be five. And run. Didn't like anything we were doing. Code, what did I do wrong? Oh, they just wanted me to specify that it was false. 
well, what the hell is the difference if I'm just putting in all the operator stuff down here? You know what I mean? I mean, that's what the Boolean operators are, are for. To determine and, or, or not. And all of that comes out to be false. You know what I mean? Set tricky to either true... Oh, Topher, set tricky. I didn't notice your comment. I was caught up in my state of confusion. Am I wrong for thinking that there should be no difference between having this guy and that? Maybe I interpreted this wrong. True or true would be true. Then it's false. And that's true, but true and false. One side is false, so... Maybe I'm broken. I'm broken. I get now that all they wanted was, uh, was just for it to be false, but good to know. Good to know. Overthinking things, as I always do. All right, so there's that. Section 11 dealt with. You're wrong. They're checking... Oh, you aren't wrong. They're checking your understanding. Aha, which is why it was commented out. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Good to know. All right. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Up next, which is this will definitely be saved for tomorrow. Object-oriented Java. Learn the principles of object-oriented programming. OOP in Java. We will take a gander at just the beginning. And you know what? Chances are we'll probably try to knock out two sections tomorrow as well. Um, yeah, because we can. So, 15 sections on the horizon for Java. Java is an object oriented programming, uh, programming language, OOP language, which means that we can design classes, objects, and methods that can perform certain actions. These behaviors are important in the construction of larger, more powerful Java programs. In this lesson, we'll explore some fundamental con concepts of object-oriented programming to take advantage of the power of OPP, OOP, I think I kept saying OPP, doesn't matter, OOP in Java. Tomorrow, that will be day 137. In the meantime, let's see stat-wise where we close out with day uh, where we conclude day 36. We are currently at 50% of the way through the Learn Java course here at Code Academy with 1,577 points to our name with badges. 219 badges. Way cool. 17 skills completed. That number keeps growing. That is that is good. That is what happens after 136 days. So yeah, that's that's about it. Uh, thank you to everyone who stopped by. Anyone and everyone. B Dempsey, Dreadsteed, and uh, Topher. Always awesome to have you. And anyone else who may have accidentally come in to view the stream. All views are greatly greatly appreciated. Let's back out of this and dive into OBS. We will stop the stream. The adventure continues tomorrow with day 137. But in the meantime, stopping the stream. Are you sure you want to stop the stream? Hell yeah. Kill it.